Hi everyone, now this is the fly I'm going to tie Now, uh, I know it's another Dynamite Harry uh, Basically, this is basically uh, it's like an autumn done as I call it uh, it's, uh, I would call the autumn type colours slightly darker um, It's a good pattern, I was fishing it the other day there and it basically caught all my fish uh, Especially obviously the ones that took the dry uh, size, this is a size 16 now, I, I've run out of the bronze but this is the black nickel version uh, it's the same hook um, it would actually go with the rest of the fly so either the bronze or um, the black nickel so the, the, the hook I'm using is this one it's the Czech nymph it's obviously meant for nymphs but it's a very good dry fly and the reason I like it uh, sits deep, it's got a really wide gap so it has, it, it does well, it, it hooks well uh, you don't miss as many, um, I, I feel I don't miss as many in this style of hook uh, I have tied different versions on a standard dry fly hook uh, it does hook but I feel this just has a wee, a wee edge over that it's just a personal thing, it's just maybe even confidence, it's, it's all comes down to that but uh, the Czech Nymph is a great dry fly. Now, fully milled do that. There's a heavy version, heavy weight version of it. So be careful if you want to tie dries, don't buy the heavy weight version. You want the standard one. Uh, I think this one, please double check with the 5065. Um, so I take it that would be the code. I'll double check. I do have the heavy version here somewhere. And here we are. Right there. That's the heavy. So basically, it's a fifth. That's a fifty sixty seven. So that's don't buy that if you want to tie dry flies. But if you want to tie nymphs, you need a wee bit of extra weight. That's the one. So anyway, first thing we're gonna do: wax with thread. Just run the wax through it. Just gives a wee bit of extra grip. Uh, thread I'm using now. I use this. It's just a hot orange. Well, I call it hot orange. It's, it's a hot orange. Uh, Uni 8 So we start at the eye come down to in line with the, the point of the hook Tail fibres I'm actually using, this is a fiery Double check the name, I keep forgetting the name of it It's a Coq de Leon, I'll just show you here So it's a Coq de Leon um, This is a bronze grade, it's a saddle and the one I'm using is a fiery ginger. I keep forgetting the name, but it's, it's actually it's not dyed. It's a natural type color. It's a lovely. It's a really nice color, warm color. You could use this the standard one. Yeah, it's up to yourself. I'm using it for color as much as um as a tail and a body part of the body in this fly. So length of the tail. It's, it's up to yourself really, it's a part of the body, part of the tail, so it can be quite long if you want it long so I usually do a turn on top, come underneath with a turn and lock it in, that just holds the tail really nice trim that away just tidy it up a wee bit and then I take a wee bit of dubbing and now so what this is, I just rub it just wrap it with a bit of UV flash through it, see there? Tiny, well, quite a lot there. And you see it catches the light. Now, you, it's a dubbing blend I use in nymphs, I use it in dries. Of uh, One time I put UV into everything, and uh, but these are the ones that's always did well for me. It's quite, because there's a guard here, there, uh, as well as a wee bit of flash, it gives it a wee bit more life. So, dang it, do a wee sort of, if you want to call it, a lump at the back now what I like to do is just get the velcro just hold the tail and bring down some of the dubbing and roll it towards the back now if you do that, what happens there's a lot more life into it obviously but it stops the, the body lifting too high though the, you can bring it back down now I'm using a par post now it's, this is a parapost from uh, Fooling Mill. Let me show you. And I'm using a what they call a dart done. A 
this one. So it's a para post. It's a, it's a big long hank. <laughs> it's, it'll, it'll last you a long time. Uh, just take a strand or so out. I've just a single strand. They've kept it quite light in this one. Now what I do is I just make sure there's a good three quarters of an inch or an inch or so. Good. A few turns down there. Make sure that it's not going to move. Now what you do is just take a twist your fibre, just to open it out, and then I usually come in a straight cut, and I want to cut it to basically the centre of the tail. So if you imagine just cutting it at a long angle, like that, just have a look. Almost a three touch long, so I'm just going to come in and reduce it. On the sides, what I'm doing here is just looking at the the length, and obviously a type of shape. You want to give the impression of a body. Now, the Cote de Leon fiber blends in with the the para post. Uh, it works. It just really does work. Now you see it's slightly up a bit. If you get a wee bit of dubbing, just to tidy that area up, same dubbing, and then you just hold, hold the set of body, if you want to call it that, and that will drop it down, just a touch, but enough to basically present it a wee bit better. And again, you should always check to see what it's like. If you don't like it, it's a wee bit square at the end, you can taper it. So always one or two fibres, but be careful you don't overdo it. Hackle, I'm using as a Cree. This is a Cree saddle I've got. This is a white and Cree. Um, the one I'm using is a white and bronze. It's the it's a Hebert Minor Dry Fly. I'll just show you. Um, it's there. And it's a mix of Cree and Furnace. It's a, you know, it's a good it's a good, it's a good saddle. You get lots of flies out it. So what we do is the length of the fibre can be quite. We should, no, don't want it too short. Don't want it too, too long though. In a parachute, you can get away with it. In a parachute, you want a good imprint. So it either works so well. So we bear some of the stem. It's important that you make sure you watch the thread here. You lift the wing up. So I use these fingers here to lift the wing back. There's a stem, you want some of the bare stem to be up into the wing because you're going to post it. I don't know if you can see it there. So when you post a, a wing and the hackle, it's, you basically take the thread up. Now the, it's important that as you come round, hold the wing and the hackle. Now, I, I don't mind, I, I'm looking for around about five turns a hackle. You want to end up with a thread in front. Where the, I mean, it doesn't bother me what way the hackle lays. I mean, it can sometimes sit upside down. It doesn't bother me. Uh, either way, it's fine. There's two, three, four. Pull it tight at five. And then just lift the fibres up. There's your hackle there. Just come over a turn. I've got three or four turns. You may catch the odd fibre, but don't worry. Trim away. Just lift your hackle up. You can see I've actually got three there. So we can tidy up, take your thread towards the eye. Now you could put a finish off if you want. It's fine at that, but I usually like a wee bit of dubbing. Just to finish it off. So I just come up, up against the hackle. Not too much now. Just check, we've not got too much, that's fine. And then you want to varnish. Sweet, simple to varnish. The way I like to do it is just to put the varnish onto the thread from about, say, a centimetre from the eye down. And then white finish. Oops. Just lift the hackle out of the way. And there we are. Trim away. Now, just before I go any further, I don't know if you can see it, but when you do that, you will get varnish onto 
the end of the your foot finishing tool. Just use your nail, you'll see it comes off. Just rub it. It'll come off. Keep it clean. You'll feel it getting sticky. But don't use any, any metal on it, just use your nail. If you use metal onto it, you'll scrape it and make it rough. You don't want to do that. So anyway, what we then do to finish the flies, just basically hold the wing, and I usually press the hackle down. Uh, trim it towards the back of the hook, so put your scissors in, come round. You can slip it, trim it at a slight angle to the back of the hook, then cut. This one or two there. Got a couple of fibres here. Just to see how I like. And that's it. That was a fly. It's a kind of dark wing. It's, I actually could see it really well yesterday, uh, sorry, on Friday when I was fishing. And uh, I mean, obviously, the colour suits. Um, this is a kind of autumn like colour. All this fluff. And there we go. Now you can, the hackle colour you can change as well. Same fly, this is a, a nice pale, pale dun or pale, pale yellow. It's a good colour, so the same fly, just change the hackle, uh, try it in different hackles. Uh, the, I mean the colour combination of the wing, tail and the body, the hackle colour can be in and badger's a good colour, uh, a natural uh, furnace good, another one, uh, I did have one of uh, the furnace you can have a grizzle the one with the grizzle so that's a brown there that's just a light down there, uh, right, but, uh, ginger sorry I mean, you, you could really experiment with the same fly and just change the colour of the hackle. Uh, it's a good pattern. The, the dynamite harry is good. Um, I'm actually sorting out my flies. They're a bit kind of... Wait, they're suffering a wee bit. So they are. Here's, here's another one. Just, you can see it's a bit, <laughs> a bit rough. Uh, it's got a lighter wing. So again, you can change the wing. That's a dark done. You can have a light done. It's up to yourself. It's, it's, once you've got a good style, you can experiment. So you can. Uh, but when you've got a great colour combination, never forget it. Uh, so basically, this is what I'd call an autumn done type pattern. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. And again, thanks for watching.